Good morning. I'm Technical Sergeant Dean Mitchell from the 326 Training Squadron, and I'll be your narrator for today's ceremony. Today's event is a celebration of the remarkable achievements of these graduating airmen. It is also a ceremony that both teaches and appreciates our United States military heritage. Over the last seven and a half weeks, these airmen have been transformed from civilians into motivated, disciplined warrior airmen with the foundation to serve in the world's greatest United States Air and Space Forces. Once these airmen leave basic military training, they will continue on to technical training to learn the skills needed to perform in their unique specialties. They will then transition onto numerous bases around the world, some working directly with our sister services. Of the hundreds of thousands of American citizens that enter the workforce each year, less than 1% have joined the ranks of the United States military. These airmen have reached a milestone in their military journey and will require your continued support to assist them in their future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our official party and the playing of our national anthem. Okay. Please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Kimberly Hall. Good morning all. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. And so on this glorious graduation day, we celebrate these incoming airmen who have passed every test to stand before us on this day. It has not been an easy climb to get to this mountaintop. There were rough days, mentally, physically, and emotionally. But yet, through it all, these fine warrior airmen persevered. Through it all, they kept their eyes on the prize and never gave up. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessings right now you are pouring upon them and the bright future that awaits them. We also know that with any great accomplishment, these airmen did not do it alone. So thank you, Lord, for their outstanding MTIs who pushed and challenged them to be better than they ever thought they could be and for their family and friends whose love, letters of support, and prayers gave them just what they needed to finish strong. So aim high, airmen. Aim high, because the best is yet to be. It is in your holy name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Chaplain Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guest, beginning with the host for today's ceremony, the Commander and Superintendent, Air Force Basic Military Training, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas, Colonel Michael Newsom and Chief Master Sergeant Leary Gaetan. From the graduating squadron, the Commander and Superintendent, 326 Training Squadron, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Fellows, and Senior Master Sergeant Lynn Stewart. <laughs> Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737th Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Today's ceremony celebrates the remarkable accomplishments of this graduating class. Our nation's future rests upon the dedication of these new class of warriors who we honor today. Senior Master Sergeant Stewart, the Superintendent, 326 Training Squadron will now say a few words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen watching via live stream, and congratulations to our graduates. The men and women who have come before you have airlifted troops and supplies into the jungles of Vietnam, executed precision airstrikes in the deserts of Iraq and Afghanistan, delivered humanitarian aid to villages in Africa and South America. They've launched missiles and flown satellites, defended airstrips, and strengthen partnerships. They have stood on the North Pole, the South Pole, and everywhere in between. Your MPIs have challenged you over the last seven and a half weeks to ensure that you are mentally and physically prepared for what lies ahead in the next phase of your military career. Now it is on you to build upon that foundation. This is the first of many milestones that you will accomplish in the future. You should be extremely proud of your efforts. But no, there is still much more work to be done. While it's an unrealistic expectation for you to be perfect throughout your career, you must continue striving for excellence so that we can continue to be the premier Air Force in the world. I have the utmost confidence that we'll continue to dominate our adversaries because of the dedication, skill, and innovation that you are bringing with you into the military service. And I am proud to have each and every one of you as my new wingman. Airmen, I leave you with this. You are joining the team that will look to define the character of our Air Force for years to come. We have the utmost faith in you because every time you recite the Airmen's Creed, you adamantly proclaim that you will not fail. And we believe you. As your superintendent, I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements and have recommended to Colonel Newsom and Chief Master Sergeant Gaetan that you receive your coveted Airman's Coin, which signifies your transition today from trainees to Airmen. Congratulations. Military training instructors, you may proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the venerable airman's coin. The lore of military coins have many colorful, if only suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from American volunteer formed flying squadrons in France during World War I. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave these medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces took all of the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he had around his neck. While in a confinement in a small French village, 
the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped. After crossing the front lines to safety, he came across a French outpost where the French initially thought him a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, there are many military units that have developed their own unique coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins in recognition of outstanding performances and achievements. The coin the airmen received today is unique in that it originates here at the gateway to the Air Force and is only given to those who complete the rigorous course of instruction and cross into the blue. On one side of the coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides, as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the original military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the date, 1947, the birthday of the United States Air Force. And around the rim of the coin, the venerable core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the new recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. Inscribed in the half circle above the new Air Force emblem is our motto, aim high, fly, fight, win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all those who see this is inscribed, awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest Air Force.
Congratulations, Airmen. Now how about that squadron pride? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as our newest Airmen recite the Airmen's Creed. I am an American Airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American Airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. I am an American Airman. Army of freedom and justice. My nation's sword and shield. A century and avenger. I defend my country. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, 326 Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Fellows. Good morning. Let me begin by saying to the families, I can only imagine how disappointed you are that you can't be physically here today to support your loved ones. Seven and a half weeks ago, you entrusted us with our nation's treasure, your sons and daughters. Your support has pushed these airmen to successfully complete basic military training and join the world's greatest Air Force. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for your support, your encouragement, but most importantly, thank you for your trust. It is my great honor to hold a ceremony introducing 644 airmen from the 326 Training Squadron, our nation's newest airmen. I would like to recognize three exceptional groups of people who were instrumental in transforming these individuals from, from civilians to the airmen that we see today. First, to those who set the standard, the military training instructors. You are the very embodiment of our Air Force core values. Integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all that you do. You invested of your time, talent, and treasure in every individual in your flight. With a firm but fair hand, you motivated and trained these individuals into airmen of character and conviction. With precision, you forged these young men and women into the world's greatest weapon system, the American Airmen. America's edge is sharpened daily through your passion, your dedication, and your commitment to these airmen. Instructors, you inspire me daily. Our nation thanks you. To the family and friends watching online, on behalf of your airmen, thank you for your steadfast support. I am proud to report that your loved ones have earned the privilege to wear the Air Force uniform. Next time you see them, you'll be amazed at how basic milita military training has transformed them. They are disciplined, motivated, and respectful. They have sworn an oath to defend our national interests around the world. Your airmen have joined an elite group and selected an exceptional way of life, but one that will involve sacrifice and time away from their family. Rest assured, they will now be separated and so they will now be supported by their brothers and sisters in arms. However, your continued support will be essential to their success, for they would not be here without a strong support network standing alongside them. Like the thousands of our brothers and sisters standing watch around the globe, distance does separate us from our biggest supporters, but we know you are always there. An airman is truly never alone. To our graduating airmen, you stand here today transformed in almost every aspect of your life. We tested your mind, body, and spirit. You learned that our Air Force core values are more than mere words. They are a very way of life. We taught you the importance of dignity, diversity, respect, and the wingman concept. 
Technology does not make us the world's greatest air force. We earn air supremacy around the globe because of you, the American airmen. You provide our global vigilance, reach, and power. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge an individual that not only met the challenges of basic military training, but excelled at them. The BMT top graduate is someone who demonstrated their ability to come out on top after successfully navigating assessments, testing their physical, academic, and aptitude to the military environment through multiple progress checks. The BMT top graduate is Airman Sophia Tritico. Congratulations. To my fellow airmen standing before me, you have my heartfelt congratulations and my sincere personal respect for accomplishing this significant milestone in your life. Jimmy Doolittle, Lance Saijan, John Chapman, today you have earned the privilege to add your name to this list of distinguished Americans individuals who raise their right hands to the heavens, pledge to give their last full measure of devotion in defense to our Constitution, and earn the title of American Airman. I have just one question for you. Are you ready to join the ranks of the world's greatest air and space force? I think they are ready. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Fellows. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Colonel Newsom will now administer the oath of enlistment. Now please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to regulation and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. According to regulation and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Airmen, and welcome to the world's greatest air and space force. Hooyah, Bulldogs! Hooyah, Bulldogs! Woo, woo. Thank you, Colonel Newsom. Ladies and gentlemen. Please remain standing for the singing of the Air Force song and the departure of our official party. From the 326th Training Squadron, Flight 827, led by Technical Sergeant Brandon Page, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Round Rock, Texas.
Flight 828, led by Master Sergeant Andy Roth, military training instructor, hometown Fort Worth, Texas. Flight 829, led by Technical Sergeant Ashley Heaton, military training instructor, hometown Bradford, Illinois. Flight 830, led by Staff Sergeant Charlotte Niner, military training instructor, trainer, hometown, Sarasota, Florida. Flight 831, led by Master Sergeant Vanessa Boggs, military training instructor, hometown, Bossier City, Louisiana. Flight 832, led by Technical Sergeant Maximilian McPhee, military training instructor, hometown Salt Lake City, Utah. Flight 833, led by Staff Sergeant Carly Briscoe, military training instructor, hometown, Warren, Ohio.
Flight 834, led by Master Sergeant Jodice Mitchell, military training instructor, hometown Jonestown, Mississippi. Flight 835, led by Technical Sergeant Eric Baker, military training instructor, hometown Howard City, Michigan. Flight 836, led by Technical Sergeant Chastity Tabor, military training instructor, hometown Centralville, Alabama. PT Excellence Flight 837, led by Technical Sergeant Alexander Kinner, military training instructor, hometown Birmingham, Alabama. PT and Academic Excellence Flight 838, led by Technical Sergeant Vanessa Gomez Alvarez, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown, San Diego, California. Flight 839, led by Technical Sergeant Edward Vaught, military training instructor trainer, 
hometown, Beckley, West Virginia. Flight 840, led by Technical Sergeant Jonathan Titano, military training instructor, hometown, Aguet, Guam. Commander's Excellence Flight 841, led by Master Sergeant Stephen Slight, military training instructor, hometown Underwood, Iowa. Flight 842, led by Master Sergeant Kenneth Morgan, military training instructor, hometown, Palestine, Texas. Flight 843, led by Technical Sergeant Alex Rhodes, military training instructor, hometown, Venice, Florida.
Flight 844, led by Technical Sergeant Corey Gallagher, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Altoona, Pennsylvania.